absolutely right. Thank you. All right, so um, can I see my screen, right? Please, chat box, chat box. Yes, 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 you can. So I don't assume. Nobody can see it. Can you see my screen? Come on, guys. I need feedback. All right, thank you, Nikkei. Okay, so I need a number of us were absent yesterday. A good number of us, not even just a number, a good number. I did went for one party, but I was not informed. That I was not aware. Um, so I won't do a recap, recap, per se. I don't know what we can do about that, but let's just see how it goes. Um, yeah, we are talking about applying a digital marketing campaign and reveal, of course, somebody comes to you, oh, let's do a digital marketing campaign or plan a digital marketing strategy. Well, we now have to start having that, now to start thinking as a digital marketer, oh, okay, so how do we plan this campaign? What do we do first? What do we do second? And all of that, right? So, yes, my other, yes, this is my other so. All right, so um, in this session, we'll be talking about basically how to create a structured campaign, um, strategy, right? Like, as you guys will be doing on your, cap, in your capstone project, right? So how do you plan that out? How do you um, work out what should work for your own kind of business? Remember that one of the things we were talking about when we were talking about all of the social media um, and digital marketing channels was the fact that, you know, they are quite peculiar to different niches, different business types, right? Um, talk about how maybe you may not have to do email marketing everywhere, right? Uh, so you have to look out for the ones that work best for you, right? Or for the brand or the business. Um, and even though I, uh, I also did a sampling, I did a sample yesterday where I reviewed um, my own capstone project, right? And I explained to all of us that uh, how you can have the flow of a capstone project, how you can make sure the conversations are adding up and things like that, right? So uh, we want to talk about those kind campaign strategies and how to structure it now, right? So first off, anytime you want to run a campaign, you will have to be clear on the objective, right? So define the goals. Uh, what do you want this particular campaign to achieve? Is it just, you just want to be, to, to be aware that you exist in the sense that you just want top of mind awareness, right? Is it that you want to get people, to, you want to get leads? People's phone number, email address, and stuff. Is it that you want people to make actual purchase, right? You are, you want people to come to the website and order. You want them to come to your DM and order. So your DM includes Instagram DM, WhatsApp DM, right? Or is it that you want people to download your app or install your app or download something? All of these things are possible. Um, goal and objective, right? And then. Um, we are now also saying that your goal should be SMART. We all know that acronym, right? It should be specific. It should be measurable, achievable. Don't just say, ah, I remember one time I had one client, one time that messaged me, one prospect messaged me end up as a client. So there was one prospect that messaged me and said, ah, I want, to, I want my business to be like Jumia. Everywhere, let's be everywhere. In my head, I was already happy that, ah, oh, I share a whole day. Right, and then now, nah, okay, so how much budget are we looking at? She now said 10,000 naira. Right? This is not a red flag already. Somebody is looking at you can use 10,000 naira to achieve being everywhere, 
the advert being everywhere like a junior. In all honesty, I didn't respond to that chat again. Because I wasn't ready for the whole bruhaha that will follow suit. Right? So for me, that was already a signal that there's run and this place is a <laughs> is a no safe zone. Right? So you have to you have to um set up achievable and no achievable goals. Right? Don't just blow up some smoke and say, I know who I am. Five thousand naira, you can I will make you one million naira. That's why. Remember when we were having a conversation where I was telling you guys that we don't promise people outright sales. Like, hey, you sell out, don't worry. You know me. You know people make all of those claims on Instagram with some of their ads. But it all honestly, it doesn't work like that, right? Because like I said, there are a lot of other factors that that you don't promise somebody, and when you know how the person comes for you. And then there is no, there are a lot of factors that has to do with the person getting closing that sale. That has nothing to do with you, right? We've talked about things like person's tone of voice. When is when did the person respond? Somebody is already want, wanting to buy something, and the person did not respond. I mean, for instance, that my ad that time I said my ad was live. I remember somebody called me on Sunday. I was somewhere. Uh, they wanted to buy. She wanted to buy a flash drive. She needed it that same day. I couldn't live where I was, right? Um, I told her, oh, I'm sorry, I'm close for today. I'm close for today till tomorrow. And then by the next day, she has already gotten somewhere else. Apparently, she really, really did that Sunday and she found a way, right? So that is the case. Some people are like that. Maybe they didn't respond on time, but they're not available. And the person has gone elsewhere to make their purchase. It will now be on you that I didn't make any sale. The person will not tell you that I didn't respond fine. Or I shouted at the customer, or I didn't respond on time, or um I was dragging with the customer to give her hundred naira discount. If somebody has bought something, say they'll buy something like maybe five, and all you should just do is so, oh, okay, so you appreciate them, oh, okay, we'll discount the delivery fee or something, just to make sure you close the sale. But you had that man. I say, no, don't lose my hundred naira or two hundred naira. Please send the complete money. You must send the complete money. That five thousand to twenty is my money. And the person lost, loses and you lose that sale, right? So stuff like that. A lot of factors that you don't have control or say over. Okay, so your goals have to be um, smart, right? Um, an example would be to increase website traffic by 20% in three months. Remember when we were talking about Facebook ads, one of the things we talked about is that we have a lot of people there and I mean, let me not even just be saying Facebook. Let me say Meta ads. I need to change that in my mind, in my mouth, and in my mind. Meta ads generally, like they have a lot of views, and we are saying that that they have over 1.8 billion people. As you, you can see, put your business in the face of somewhere around 500k, for instance. There's a high chance that you will sell something tangible, right? So the more they reach, the more the chances of sale. Okay, so. The same thing to his applier. This person is just saying, I can just get people to my website. You know, my website is bam. You have all the details, you have all the proofs, all the testimonials. If I can just get 10 or 15, I don't know that you've done some businesses like that where you just say, I can just find myself in the middle of these students. We so buy this my earring because it's affordable. It's just one key. It's nice. Actually, there are times like that. There are projects like that that you just feel, but I can just find, enter my, my invisible space. No problem. I, I know I'll see something, right? So let your goals be this clear. And then the next thing, which is very, very important, of course, it's not when we're setting up our ad, is that you need to identify your target audience, right? Identify your target audience. Understand who these people are. Who is your ideal customer? Remember, we also said that when you're talking about your target audience, we are not here talking about... um people anomalies, right? You have the principle around target audience is people who are most likely going to take action. Not people that are arguably going to take action. Once you are talking about a target audience, you have started explaining, explaining yourself. I have one 17 year old, I have one 15 year old. It's already a recipe for a, a, a that's an anomaly. Right? So consider factors like age, gender, location, Interests, behavior, uh, 
and first demographic generally, right? Demographic, psychographic, and then um, behaviors. That's where you, you, you coin that from. And then you can also create your buyer persona. Basically, a detailed profile of who can stand as your ideal customer, right? For instance, when we were talking yesterday, we talked about Charles, right? Agbabola. He single handedly brought out Charles and said, Charles, look at what the day in the life of Charles look like. And then, so you can also, when you are doing a buyer persona, you can single handedly bring out an individual and say, okay, this is a typical representation of my target audience, right? And then you can begin to coin things from there. So um, that's what a, a buyer persona um, looks like. Um, example, an upper Nigerian college graduate, aged 25 to 34, both male and female, interested in technology, fashion, music, entrepreneurship, who frequently uses Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, engages with uh, content about personal development, right? So this is very important, very, very important, right? The target audience is, is key to a lot of the things you do in digital marketing, right? Because it will determine um, whether you need to send email, whether you need, what strategy you need to employ or apply, right? So that's why it's important you find out who these people are. Condom market research. I uh, remember yesterday when we were looking at my own project, right? I told you how we even put out um, surveys, right? A Google survey. And we shared people to find out why they are taking kind of vodka they are taking, right? So that we can extract information on how ask questions like, okay, what can make you change your vodka brand? We ask questions like, um, um, how did you start taking um, vodka, you get, who made you? You see this or this or that. But we wanted to figure out their relationship with vodka, basically, so that we can find a way to squeeze ourselves in, right? So you, you analyze competitors, look at what your competitors are doing, analyze where what works for them. Remember, we we did a little um Venn diagram yesterday where we said you need to know what the the, what the competitors have been doing, right? And what you want to do different. So you extract competitors, or you sort of them have been doing, this sort of been doing, and this is what we are doing. And then you go and find out what the customer wants, right? The missing, missing in the market. Then you marry it together. So usually, in the grand scheme of things, that's what usually forms what we call your big idea, right? It starts from understanding what the market wants, or what the customer wants, what the customer is saying. And the magic is what you are bringing to the table. And then what you are bringing to the table is always a, and an overview of, oh, you've studied the market, you find out what the market is currently giving and what they are missing, right? And that what they are missing is also based off on what the customer is asking. So by the time you mention them together, bam, you become unstoppable, right? Because you already now know what the customer is missing out on. And coming to give them that, which is always hard and more, right? You also need to understand trends. Stay updated on the latest trends in your industry, right? In the industry of the um, product or business or service, as well as digital marketing, right? Just the way we are talking, when we we're talking about platforms then, we we're talking about TikTok. And I mentioned that I'm not really a fan of TikTok because sometimes I would, I would just open the platform and see somebody eating liver, raw liver, or see somebody saying he's burying himself inside somewhere. So just somebody doing, or people doing a quad things. Right, but then it's it's trend. Um, the evidence out there is pointing to the fact that this platform is really has people's attention too. Right, aside Instagram that has people's attention, TikTok also has people's attention in its droves, right, in a huge amount. So I have to bow to that um, number and figure that is telling me that, and look for a way to learn how to try and manage it. Maybe I don't have to stay there and watch. Um, eat their liver, right? But maybe I can come in and do my business and leave, right? Or look for a way to, I need to, my client tomorrow says they want this or it comes a criteria, they want job opening that I really, really want. So that I don't shoot myself in the, log and, in the leg and say, just because I don't like TikTok, that's how I don't lose one job, eh? 
I will collect the job and go and meet one Gen Z. That please, eh, what's going on to talk? If I need that refresher, if I'm not yet into it, into it, and I find somebody who is into it, why not? Humble myself and learn, learn from that person, right? And not, also, not even that it's a hard platform per se. I'm even just saying that when trends come up like this, you should be ready to learn. I'm right? ready to bow to it. I have somebody who wants to teach me now how to run TikTok ads for Nigeria. Not the one that you have to switch on VPN and all of that. He wants to do from Nigeria to Nigerians. All right, so it's a no brainer. Um, example computers are successfully using Instagram and LinkedIn. So you can use Facebook Ads Library to see ongoing ads. It's a platform called Facebook Ads Library. Yeah, you can input any brand's name or handle, and you'll be able to find the ad parts they are currently. They are currently running, right? You'll be able to find that. So you can conduct those market research. Let's go to the next. Um, choose your channels. We've talked about a couple of different, a couple of channels, right? SEM, I'm just pay per click. Talked about them, um, social media, all of those channels. So you now have to also select, decide which digital platforms to use, based off on where your target audience spends their time, right? So, um, this is very important. You know the channels you want to push out the stuff based off on where you know your customers are. If somebody's ultimately targeting Gen Z's and maybe not millennials and the likes, then the person should really, really major on TikTok and Gen, and, I say Gen Z, and Snapchat, because that's where they are, right? So if somebody really, really, really wants to be the, in the faces of Gen Z, then that's where to go, right? If you are now maybe, okay, you want to do Gen Z and uh, um, millennials and maybe the other guy, hey, if I now say, okay, I'm major on Instagram, but if you do your core, Gen Z is in TikTok, it is right. You should sleep there. So, um, you have to consider all of this. Of course, all of this we're talking about to then choose your channels. And it's all nice. People ask me questions like, Should I be everywhere on all the channels? And you know, one of the things I always tell them is, You don't have to because I'm a preacher of um, consistency than quality than quantity. So, if it's two core channels. That you've seen that oh these two these people are really really here then build on it solidly, right? Because in fact we have realized that they are you know a lot of people sometimes the way they even manage their Instagram accounts they post some things they posted on TikTok they just really download it and come and post on Instagram. You don't see the TikTok in there, right? And that's because like we are saying some of these channels they are on this platform they, they some of these customers or prospects or your target audience they might be. On some of those channels, right? There's a high. I remember I was checking one statistics one time where they said, where they said, five percent of people or seventy percent of people who are on Instagram are on TikTok. Um, there's a certain amount of people who are on Twitter who are on Instagram. We should did that combo, right? And we saw the start. So a lot of times, it it envelops each other to an extent, right? You have people on one channel who are also on the other channels, right? So, so many times I just say, minimum should be maybe like two channels. Right, but if you can handle being everywhere, fine. Maybe you are an agency, and you guys have people, agency people everywhere. Oh, great! If you can't, then you might want to major on maybe like two channels, right? Are you all still with me? Yes. 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 Awesome. yes. Please, I'm waiting for more response. We are with you, sir. Yes, oh, sir. Awesome, Maria Steph. Yes. Who else? Manuel. We are with you. 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 Yes, yes, yes. I've heard Victor. I've heard it. You are here, Esther. Okay, we are making a bar before, Abby. <laughs> no, I was trying to look. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, awesome. Now, integrate channel. I'm sure all chosen channels work together seamlessly to deliver a consistent message. So when we've now decided the two channels we want to work with, maybe make sure there's consistency across the board, right? So that it makes it easy for people to be able to keep up with the, in case there's a copy account, right? So make sure that it's the same messaging you are putting across the board. Maybe not the same graphics design or whatever, but it's the same core messaging, right? 
It's very important. Develop your message and content. Right now, once you've decided, oh, these channels we are doing, this this we are doing, right? Target audience set, channel set, now develop your message and content. Craft this message, make sure it's compelling and resonates with your target audience, right? Um, give details about your products or services. Create this content, develop engaging content in different forms. You know, we talked about different forms of content, video, ecographic, social media, posts, emails, all of these things, right? You have to create the actual content. Uh, examples are like blog posts, short videos, infographics, LinkedIn articles, right? As I'm saying all of this, your capstone puts a present your manifest your target audience and start telling us how do you, what platforms do you use? How do you plan to sell this item across those platforms? And then start telling us, oh, we do an ad, we do a this, we do a that. Our emails will look like this. Our content will look like this. Uh, whatever, whatever will look like this. This is a sample of the vibe we want to push out every time. That's the way I showed you guys a video of me, right? I showed you a video. Uh, like, I was telling you guys how that's oh, we're trying to portray to everybody the the we are trying to portray to everybody the kind of um act that we are going to push out, right? So um that being said, we so um how you plan to push the product and all of that, right? So it's very important you let us know that or you plan for that at least. Um, set a budget. So you now you know you've started buying all of these things. You now start telling your clients how much this will cost, right? How you plan to allocate the funds? So we spend two two percent on Instagram or this platform because that's where we have more of our 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 prospects, right? Uh, we we'll spend it on this platform and this platform, or we we'll spend it on this one and then the next platform we we'll do this there. Or we'll do a test on both platforms and see which one does it better. You get, so you have to explain to them how you plan to use the funds. Does that mean how much money you can spend on your campaign and allocate the budget across different channels, right? Uh, also monitor the spending and also keep track of your expenses, right? Example, for instance, you want to spend 500K, you divide it amongst social media ads, content creation, search engine marketing, that you decided that, oh, we want to hire a content creator to help us do this, do this, do this. So the money, so this amount is going there. This and this and this is how much you spend on ads. This and this is how much you spend on SEO. Or uh, because of our budget, we not do SEO. We just put on um, the ads on this platform and this platform and then the content, right? Just see me, I was talking about the product I mentioned in class where I said, well, I've had to pay somebody to help me create content I'm going to use for my ad. So all of those things are also, we are still within budget. Pay the person, okay, this is what this person is going to do for me. And then after that, I will now say, oh, I can spend some amount on this. If I want to do a one-page website, then people can place their order directly without having to talk to me, still my decision to make, or I'll just rely on them sending us Instagram DM and all that, right? So um, all of those are quite important, right? Um, by the time we do all of that, you realize that you are making progress to a digital marketing campaign. We can. Is that clear so far? Is this clear so far? So far, so good. Yes, so sir, it so is. Good. Yes, sir, it is. Awesome. So the next thing you want to do is create a timeline. Right, because I know people procrastinate a lot, right? So plan these activities. Um, a lot of um CEO look out for this, right? I've been in meetings where when I say, okay, what's that? So what time frame are we looking at? But how how soon can we start this campaign? Triggered. So that is not we 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 will so we want to put a timeline to it. It helps. It helps us hit those goals as fast as we can. It helps us um it helps us make progress with this. You know how we have to start off. A lot of us are, have, have attended events, right? Where they put the time to say, oh, we are attending this event at two time. But they started planning a long time ago. Started pushing those ads and those campaigns. Maybe like one month back, registration is up. You get, so you, you, 
you you will see a huge success in campaigns like that than the ones that you just rush and say, let's just be doing, let's just be doing. Right. So plan activities, outline all the activities that will be involved in this campaign, right? Such as content creation. Oh, let the content be ready by so so time. Right? Let the ads go live by so so time. Let us send out the first set of emails by so 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 time. Right? Set deadlines as well. All of these activities as you are doing to obtain deadlines. This example is week one and week two. We'll be applying a, 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 a campaign. We can have week two. Let's make sure we have done, we've created the content. They are ready. We've seen them. We've edited them, right? We've reviewed them. And all the possible corrections have been done, right? Week three, let's make sure our ads are live so that it can run for the remaining how many months, right? And within, from week four and week two, week 12, we are monitoring, you know how we monitor those ads, right? Like when I told you that, then we did an ad in class that I had to share you guys a screenshot that I already increased the ad spend. Because once I was monitoring it and I saw it was doing fine, I was like, ah, okay, this thing is doing well. Let me increase the money and stretch, increase it a little more, increase the time frame too, right? So instead of doing just one day from, I think that was it, was that a Thursday? Yes, I think that was a Thursday. So by the time we did that ad on a Thursday, I saw as I, before it ended on Friday, I thought it was doing really good. I increased the money and increased the time frame. I stretched it Sunday or Saturday, I think. And I saw more results, spent more money, right? So at that point, you monitor, you optimize. If it's not doing fine, you can turn off what is not doing fine and maybe tweak, do another tweak, right? When I mean do another tweak, I mean try content too. So for instance, with this, my product I mentioned, I'm having two people create content for me. So once there's two people create content for me, I'm going to now put two of them to the test, the same time frame, the same amount I will spend on both, and I'll see which one is giving me more attention. All right, the one that's giving me more attention, I'll keep advertising that one and increase the money there. The one that's giving me less, I'll leave it on my page, but I won't spend money on it. So like I always say, one of the things I say a lot is that when we are doing all of these things, we want to find out what is working, that we can keep doing it. And we want to find out what is not working, that we can stop doing it. So when I say, we want to find out what's working and what's not working, basically it's what's working so that you can keep doing it or you can do more of it. What is not working, that you can stop doing it so you're not wasting money, attention, time, and resources. Right? So you monitor, optimize, and retarget or re-engage. Right? And then lastly, you implement the campaign. So launch it. Start executing the campaign. So you put out the timeline and everything. Yeah. Next thing is to start. Right? So start executing the campaign according to your plan. Right? Coordinate efforts, ensure all the team members align and they pick up their roles and responsibility. Use analytics. Google, you know, Instagram has a, 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 a an analytic, analytics page, right? So that you can track performance. You know that day I was showing us my or showing us my screen. I did a screen record and I shared to the group where you are saying follow, follow, follow. All of these things were showing me follow from your ad. Look at the things you right. You see, it was saying so so and so, so started following from your ad, started following from your ad, from your ad, from your ad. So I knew those followers were from ad. So they're not from me. I went somewhere and begged people, oh, but you follow me. I want to show my student that that you <laughs> that people are following me. That was not what I did, right? can see it's obviously that I say from art, from art. So I also remember I had a client who was telling me that I was, good, I was I, the art did not work at all. It didn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I was having all of this back and forth. What I just did was I went to the DM and I started taking screenshots of where the team was showing that inquiry from art, inquiry from art. So people were making inquiry, but she wasn't. She wasn't acknowledging them to me to the fact that it was the ad that was going in. I just took screenshots and marked that particular line. I said, inquiry from ad, inquiry from ad. And you started expressing your opinion. You're not telling me that you didn't get any results. How is that possible? That's just why it's watching me. Without knowing, I say, ah, I should not know that it was the advert that brought them. Trigger says, it's good you know what you are doing. So people can just be, I don't want to, would I say dubious or um, they can just be a handful, so to say, right? So analyze, review, all of these things. In fact, that's one of the most important part of it. If they're just doing digital marketing, um, pushing digital marketing or applying digital marketing skills, I am not analyzing. 
you are, you almost will not make progress because analysis helps you. I'm doing this and this and this is not working. You have to stop it and start thinking of another thing you should do. It should be on that kind of content you should push. The same thing I was telling you. I think she could not appreciate me. Don't mind that. Don't mind them. Um, so just like I said, I made an example one time where I said I had a product in Lagos Abuja for Tacos. Right? It's just best that I just stop the potato at the time because I was spending money on ad spend and it wasn't converting. It wasn't converting as much as Lagos and Abuja. It's just why I submitted. Well, if I was just doing bad, let's just be doing our bad. We, once you sell, we sell. Once we sell, we sell. It doesn't mean that I would have been spending, I would be spending more money. By the time I run ads, you don't know, add, let's say you don't know, add 30K. You now say uh, five products, 2,500 each times five. That's like seven five. Right? It's now it's seven five. So it's more than seven five, twelve five. So if it's now that twelve five, you spend twenty K. You got twelve five. Who lose? You get so you see that it's not adding up, but if you are not particular about tracking, analyzing, you'll just be lost. You'll be doing business, you'll be like, I think that this, this business is normal. But I always send this screenshot and saying you are selling, you are selling, you are selling. But then you don't know they are losing money because the amount of money you spend on ads. You're supposed to be able to deduct it from your sales and still be in the profit zone. That's in the long run, not immediately. You know, like, just not at day to day. I made all the money on it. In the long run, by then you planned and pushed for a while. Right? Or you can also go the route of just building the thing little by little. The way, so I some small business owners come to me and say, I want to know at There's some of them that by the time I look at them, I know that this one can't handle me saying, bring so, so I'm out. I'll tell them. Just think of an amount of money that you can use for your ads that will not affect business capital. Right? So you are doing business. Let me say you are doing business. You can afford 5K per weekend, 30K per weekend. It's not bad. I think I've, I've sometimes in class, I'm citing examples of maybe 100K, 200K, 250K, or you see my ad account, you're seeing those huge amount of money. It doesn't mean every business can handle it, right? There are some small business that can't do that. It would be insensitive of me to push them to say, Bring 50k, bring just bring it, just carry your business money. It will not, it will be insensitive of me to do that, right? But do I want them to bring at least tangible money to an extent for the ads? Yes, trigger. So, I used to, I used to tell them is you are doing business, you are making money. Once you're sure you are making money, right? You're doing business, you should be able to earmark some amount of money to say, ah, make I use push the business a little more, right? They used to say, now money, they take my money, so you have to spend some money to make some money. Right, so those are things you always have to have in mind. And analytics help you spot those things. Well, this one is working, this one is not working, this one is doing fine, this one is not doing fine. Oh, we need to receive, re review this, we need to stop this, right? So, uh, like I said, monitor and optimize track. So, once your, your, your campaign is now live, everything is going, monitor and optimize, right? Track performance. Use analytics tools and adjust your strategies. Sometimes adjusting your strategy can mean you stopping the entire ad or the entire campaign and then restarting again, right? It could be you changing the content, the entire content. You know, I used to say it sometimes that for instance, for ads, to be exact, I used to say two of the reasons why, yeah, the major two reasons why people's ads don't convert is number one, the creative or the ad targeting. If you are targeting the wrong people. There's no how, no how, no how that you show me um, uh, earring from now to next year. I will not buy. The earring can be too extreme. It will be something. There's just something you will show me for a long time. No matter how long you show me, I cannot buy. I will not buy it. Not because I cannot buy it, because I'm not interested in it. Right? Hmm. But there are some things you will show me that will jump at it. Right? So that target. If you're targeting the wrong person, no matter how long you are doing that, you will see results. Right, the same thing too with the next, this other one is then the creative. The advertising to me and the advertising is not convenient, catchy, catchy enough, or there's no offer, there's nothing unique. But you just say, you Come and sew clothes. Like, I have somebody who sews my clothes, I'm not interested. That's the that's kind of like how the response will be like, right? So you need to review all of those and adjust the strategy. Evaluate and learn, that's analyze results, learn and improve. Right, compare before and after and adjust strategies and that. So 
that's more like what a digital marketing um strategy or just planning a digital marketing campaign that's kind of what it looks like right what you have to flow through right how you have to think it through before you then come up with if you by that by that you, you a map of important all of those things you will now um you can now say oh you have a campaign strategy right so of course at the end of those things like I said, the beginning is setting your goal. So at the end, you'll be able to know, I will be successful. Because by the end of, you now go and check your goals. I will, will be successful with this campaign or not. If you get good attention, you'll be able to convert this attention based on your goals, right? If you achieve it, so it forms your KPI. You can now, now know that, oh, okay, we are successful. Oh, we are not successful. Oh, we are close to being successful. Oh, it was a good attempt, right? So any question on that, please? I want to get questions. Questions, please. So no questions. questions. Can you take your slide backwards? You say what? Somebody was saying something. I said no question for me. Why? I just um my takeaway from the um digital marketing strategy is that if you're after targeting your ad and doing everything, if you feel that it's not um if you've analyzed that you see that it's not working, it's best to like strategize and then go ahead to do um another market research to, to know if your audience are truly on that channel so thank you awesome awesome any other person please Nobody else. Who is writing on my screen now? Who's writing on my screen? Um Where's my cleaner? What is writing on my screen? Um is somebody trying to say something? All right, so let's move on then. In the absence of none, um, so we want to talk about some digital marketing frameworks, right? And Let's talk about some digital marketing frameworks. And basically, these are like um, structured approaches that you can use to plan, execute, and analyze your digital marketing plan or um, efforts, right? Or that's a strategy still. And then this framework just helps businesses and industries to strategically um, engage audience, optimize campaign, and achieve marketing goals, right? So here are some examples. We have the AIDA framework. And what AIDA stands for is like attention, interest, desire, and action, right? And this framework focuses on the different stages of the customer goals. Some people call it um, um, the buyer funnel different English for it, right? But basically, 
this the approach here just is like the customer journey. Right? You you do something to get their attention, you do something to get them interested, you do something to make them desire it, and then you do something to make them take action. Right? So let's see how that effort applies. For attention, you have to capture the customer's attention. You get so and can capture the attention in any way. It could be with a with a, with a crazy campaign. Maybe we just have Brother Shaggy stumbling into different malls in black and white, more like a Tom Tom outfit, right? Or you see a lot of skit makers just walking everywhere with black and white, black and white, and then there's not a campaign of paint the world, paint, paint the streets, painting the streets black and white, Tom Tom, da da da, and or imagining Tom Tom, one thing, one thing. So you gather that attention, Abby. Or you just gather some people. You just wear one outfit that has um that looks like ketchup. They are walking everywhere. Just something amazing that can grab attention, right? Next thing will not be interest, engaging the customer with relevant information. They can clarify their doubts, basically, clear their doubts, right? So those relevant information, content, and creatives can help you do that. Desire, building a desire for the product or service. Then action, encouraging the customer to take specific action such as making a purchase. Let's see an example. The fashion brand running a Facebook ad campaign, for instance. The attention will be eye-catching ad visuals, right? Interest will be detailed product description and benefits. Desire will be testimonials and user-generated content showcasing satisfied customers. That one, it increases the desire. Ooh, ah, that could be me. That could be me, right? And then action is clear call to action with a discount code. Yes, these are some of the industries that this can fit but properly. The e-commerce guys, because of course the e-commerce guys, because they can follow up at every stage, right? They can try and follow up and move you to the next page. Maybe via email or via pop-ups. Or your skills. You are just you've been meaning to buy one shoe. You've been going to gym and check that to check that to every time. 50k, 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 and suddenly it just pops up on your screen one day that they are doing 25 percent discount. You can get that for that. Okay. There's a high chance that a person will jump on it, right? So, e commerce, retail, and consumer goods. Let's go to the next. The next is race planning framework. This is also really popular among uh, digital marketers because when I was working on my project, a lot of my other colleagues used. This is the race framework. And basically, what this race includes is what are you going to do to reach, to be able to act, to get people to convert, to get people to engage. This framework focuses on the entire customer life cycle also, right? From awareness to advocacy. And then reach means the R in reach, the R in race rather means reach, right? And that's you building awareness, making sure you're in the pieces of people. You understand what the word reach means, Abi? They talked about it in class, impression and reach. You're trying to get yourself in the faces of people, building awareness and attracting visitors. Act, encouraging interaction and leads, basically engagement. There's another word, if I want to change that word, act, right? Letting people to engage. Three, convert, turning leads into customers, right? And then engage. The last one has to do with building a long-term relationship and encouraging repeat businesses or repeat purchase or repeat order, right? Basically, repeat patronage. Now, what, let's, cite an, let's see an example of this. So an example, right? This is a SaaS company marketing strategy. The reach can be SEO, social media marketing, that's maybe ads, and then online advertising, right? And then the act will be offering free trial or downloadable resources.
and then combat utilizing email marketing and personalized landing pages help you to make them customers like place and other right and then engage with people providing excel excellent customer support and then regular updates people are complaining between the products is hanging this one that one providing um, regular updates right it's best fit for technology products SaaS products online services And there's the STDS. This talks about see, think, do, and then care. Right? So basically, uh, what are we going to do to get people to see us? What are we going to do is to get people to always think about us or think about us first? How are we going to, what are we going to do to make them act as do the purchase? Right? And then what are we going to do to make them know that we care? And this way work is also customer centric, right? And also in that form of targeting what the customer on their journey to being our customer, the prospects on the journey of them being moving from process to being customers, right? C, creating brand awareness among a broad audience. Think, engaging with potential customers who are considering a purchase. Two, Encouraging the purchase of conversion. Then care, fostering loyalty and encouraging repeat business. An example is a fitness brand marketing plan, right? See inspirational posts and videos on social media or, or people working out or what have you. Think blog posts and webinars about fitness tips or educative content in general. Do special offers limited time discount on membership, uh, special deals, and the likes. Care, regular follow-up newsletters and loyalty programs, right? It's best, the best fit industry, health and fitness, wellness, and their lifestyle brands. Uh, inbound marketing focus, focus or framework. Uh, this one focuses on attracting customers through valuable content and experience tailored to them, right? So instead of just pushing messages out. Attract, so what we do to attract, that's joining the right audience and deliver content. Convert, so for instance, there's a friend of mine who is working on, he's working with World Organization that came up with a, a, a platform for podcasters that they can use to run their content, their podcasts and the likes, right? I've not actually downloaded the app, but, and then the subscription fee for the app is like 1,200 or 1,300 every month. They told me that they, ask me, they pay him with, um, they pay him with, um, what's the word now? They pay him, what's the word now? They pay him based on um, his work, right? His um, commissions. And he's telling me that he has me to get people and all of that, da, da, da. So what he has been doing before was that he just, he, because he knows a little bit of digital marketing, so he tries to well, I used to teach him put some digital marketing. I would run out, but I tell them to come and learn digital marketing, and then I would tell them about the podcast too. So. And then what I told him was that no, he has been going around in the wrong way. And he should not be marketing digital marketing with that. It's not a product that goes hand by hand, hand, hand side by side. And then that people are coming. In fact, people will, I'm telling you that people will come there because of digital, digital marketing training, and then they know. Even, even, because sometimes it says people even sponsor, like pay him and sponsor, like maybe 10 people and the likes. But then, they will not release any episode of podcast. I told him, they are not interested in podcasting in the first place. They are just forcing the podcasting on them. So I told him to advertise instead, do a flyer or push out something that, A, is a training for podcasting 101, um, how to start and go a a profitable podcasting um, business, right? And if he does that, you should get the resource person to train on how the whole podcasting ecosystem works. And at the end, it will be it's a two-day stop. The next day, they will now tell everybody to download the app and pay and sign up and then they will do a demo and show sure. But there's a high chance that with that kind of webinar, people will end up signing up on that platform. Because people who wants to go into who wants to go into podcasting, I will sign up for the 
training in the first place. They are the ones that are more, most likely going to end up um, releasing their first podcast. If you get to attracting, I'm saying that to point to this, so attracting the right audience for that particular niche or that particular place is very important. Not just attracting everybody, the right one. Right? And then you combat them, turn the visitors into lead through call to action and landing pages, and then close, transform leads into customers by nurturing them. And then delight, ensure customers are happy and turning them into promoters. Remember, I told you about my friend who was always telling me about one AC, one AC like that. Because that was because she was a happy customer. She literally did not turn me into a promoter. Right? I told you that time they were, they were servicing a, a AC for every, every month, I think, for one year, for free. So that got her to the happy customer level. An example would be a B2B consulting firm. Attract publishing insightful blog posts and white papers. Convert offering free consultation sessions or downloadable guides or checklists. Uh, close using email marketing to provide case studies and testimonials. Did delight conducting regular check-ins and surveys to ensure client satisfaction. B2B Best fits B to B professional services and education. I know I know in marketing agency they used to reach out to your clients every now and then say, Are we hitting your are we helping you with your goals? What do you think you can do better? And all of that because yeah, they will not go and tell them that sorry, our CEO is sick, or we are trying to do one thing, one thing. No, uh, we just use scope. We just use scope and do um what's the word now? We just go back and just push you away by telling you that ah, we had an internal meeting, we are just re strategizing. They are not strategizing, they are looking for somebody else, or they, they don't want to do digital marketing again. Right? So that's that's kind of it. Because an education is another best fit industry, right? And there is a seven piece of marketing. There is seven piece of marketing. And this one has to do with um Products, uh, price, place, promotion, right? And then we have people, process, and physical evidence. And products, that's to do with the goods or services that you offer. You have to let, it, let it make it obvious. Price, the pricing strategy, right? It could be you having packages or you having different offers. Place, the distribution channels. Promotion, the marketing communications, people, staff, and customers involved. Process, the procedures and processes in delivering the product. Fiscal evidence, the tangible proof or environment where the service is delivered. Let's see an example. In restaurants, for instance, right? Marketing strategy can be the product, high quality meals with unique recipes, the price, competitive pricing with value meals, right? Because getting your money's worth, right? Place, strategic location and online delivery options. Promotion, social media campaigns, loyalty campaigns, and discounts. People, friendly and trained staff providing excellent services. That's what you want to push. I think there are some brands that we just, we just believe that all their customers, all their users are happy. I remember that time Mr. Big first started. You see all their workers very smiling and very happy. I know if you go to the UK and the US, you see a lot of people say, oh, I want to work in McDonald's. It's because it's not here that you see somebody, if somebody tells you now, ah, I'm working in, a, in an eatery. You just know that this one says, you just know, the person does not have level, something like that, right? No, but in those places, if somebody tells you that his dream is to work in McDonald's, right? So because of, how the system works over there, right? So people actually mark our process, efficient ordering and delivery system, fiscal evidence, attractive restaurants, ambience, and online reviews, right? So those are fiscal evidence. The best fit industries for this are like hospitality businesses, like restaurants, hotels, and like food and beverage industries, and then some retail industries too. 
growth hack framework. Um, this has to do with a rapid experimentation across marketing channels, right? And the steps include analyze, understand the current state and setting goals, ideas, brainstorm potential growth strategy, prioritize as choosing the best ideas to start, test, implementing the strategies and measuring results, optimize, refining and scaling successful strategies. An example, remember app startup. We analyze by using analytics tools to understand user behaviors. Ideas, you now start generating ideas to improve the user experience. Prioritize, selecting the top ideas based on potential impact. Test, you run an A-B testing. You know, sometimes Instagram is to do, do it with us. But the time they were moving keys around, right? Running A-B tests on app features or marketing campaigns. Optimize. Even me, I did the A-B testing with the marketing and ads the other day, right? Um, optimize scaling the successful tests to grow the user base. Example of industries that do the startups, tech companies, online service. And there's one we call so start. If I do so start framework, can actually be a full blown marketing framework, right? When I mean full blown, not just digital. I mean, that was actually what we used for my projects. I said where we had the strategies. Uh, this so start starts with situational analysis. What's going on in the market? What's going on in the industry? Right? So you're assessing the current situation, the landscape, an objective, you're setting goals, um, strategy, developing a plan to achieve the objective. Now, what's not the plan? You want to make sure you are the world known, world renowned um, waste exchanger in Africa, Nigeria. Right? So, what's the strategy around that? Um, develop a plan to achieve the objective and the tactics. That is now has to do with the digital marketing push, defining the specific action to execute the strategy. So what's the action? I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this and this. On this place, on that place. Right? So that we can achieve this. And then you have the action, implementing the tactics, and then control, monitoring and measuring the performance. Let's see an example. An example is a travel agency marketing plan. Situation analysis will be evaluating the current market trends and competition. Objective will be increasing uh, bookings by 20% in the next quarter. What's the strategy? What's the target millennials and adventure travel packages? What's the tactics using social media ads, influencer partnership, and email marketing? Action, executing the campaigns and managing bookings. Control, analyzing campaign performance and adjusting as needed. Best fit for this industry includes travel, tourism, and their real estate. Any question, please? This is the last one. This is the last strategy. Any question, please? Pick up. Or oh, forever. It's forever. Don't hold, your, you don't hold any piece for me. <laughs> I want to hear it. Wahib, yes. Go on. Just raise your hand and I'll call you. Wahib, do you have something to say? Ah. Is everybody thinking about they will stand up and do exercise? So. We are not eating not about. You do not stand up in your house. I'll push you. It's just see me behind you. Who is who is asking me a question? Hello, sir. Yes, please go on. Okay. Um, for the different frameworks that you've um that are that have been highlighted, are there um particular ones that um do well, or it just depends on the um target audience that we, uh, is it the target audience that will determine for you or for the person which of the frameworks to use, or are there just specific ones that work anyhow? All right, thank you very much for asking. Um, basically, some things can inform the framework you want to use. Uh, many a times it's 
has to do with both the target audience and the industry. Okay? So you know that in certain industry, you need to prove certain things. For instance, in the in the application world, right, or SaaS product world, most of them, if you notice, they used to do 30 days free trial. Because they, they have most of the time they have to give you an experience first. Or you are now, you are now you can now move to say, oh, let me subscribe. I think I need this. Right? But imagine going to a restaurant and wanting 30 days free trial. You know, it can't work, it can't work there, right? So if I don't come and eat food for 30 days finish, and then that's when you say, okay, I think I'll be coming to this restaurant. It won't work in that case. So both the industry and the target audience. Influence that so you have to now see which one works for um, your own industry and for your target audience. I hope that's clear. Yes, it is. Awesome. Thank is you. Is anybody else? Thank you very much. Nobody else. Is there no one else? No one else? Okay, okay, okay. Well, let me then touch on this part of this conversation, right? And why I'm saying I want to talk about this part of the conversation is because running ads sometimes can be a handful, can be complicated and, very, and can be frustrating. When you are doing all the work, I are not seeing results, right? So that brings me to wanting to talk about this. And when I'm saying how to run ads like a pro is how to quickly pick on what is wrong with the ad. So a number of times I've seen people's ads and I can just easily say, this is the problem. Right now, because of the fact that, uh, well, aside the fact that I'm experienced, and that thing is also the fact that um, I've come to understand the ecosystem of the place, right? And worked across a couple of niches to be able to pinpoint certain loopholes when I see them. So that's what it means to run um, ads like a pro. Not just meta ads, but almost all kind of ads. And one of the things that I want us to always realize is that it all begins with your initial setup. You know how when we are having classes, I tell you that I tell you that when we started classes on social on social media, I thought told us how we should make sure you set up your account and all of that. I wasn't just saying that just to waste our time. I was saying that because like I would say in class that many a times when we want to buy, even we, if we want to be truthful to ourselves, you know that when you want to buy something online, there's just a reflex that you just go to the page, you want to go to the profile and size the person up. Right, you want to check out a couple of things. And it might not be intentional. It's just you just want to clear your curiosity. You might have doubt. You just want to check as this person been posting. You may not just go and say as this person posting. You just want to check. You, you before you know, you know, you will know if you are satisfied or not. Right, and that's why I'm now saying here that it all begins with your setup. Make sure you crafted a memorable username that's easy to search. In fact, many at times when I want to run out for clients. They are calling to just come and run ads. We have to go and review their page first. Because in the long run, they'll just come to me and say, ah, this ad is not work. And all that, right? Not knowing that they were the one partly who are the cause of the ad not working. Right? Because their page is not looking good. But then I have to review it and make some adjustments because if there's no result, it's me, they will say, I worked with this guy. So it did not work. Right? So you need to come and start from here. You need to make sure the username is good. You need to ensure the name fields includes keywords for searchability. We did that in class, right? We want to make sure you are writing a clear and engaging bio that communicates not just your value, but also what the business is about, right? Also, choose a link wisely. What do you want to send people to? And how have you structured that? So you are using, if you are using link tree, like I suggested, when they click the link tree, all of those other buttons, what are these, are these suggestive buttons? Like the way I, now I suggested to us, I should make them suggestive buttons. Do you want to do this? Click. Do you want to do this? Need to do this? Are you confused about our offers? 
talk to us. You should get it be something interactive, not a uh, website, uh, WhatsApp, office, second second floor. Or I mean, you, you have some offers. One is called Coco Light, Coco Coco Pure. That's a Coco Pure, Coco Light. Okay, it's a bit too stringent, too strict, right? So you need to maximize your leg well. Um, also highlight need to make sure they are in good form. They are um they are all well set, right? Keep also keep a cohesive feed that reflects your brand aesthetics and vibe. That's making talking about the feed outlook, right? And the other thing too is what do you have page? You no, know, on Instagram major you can pin three contents. So what do you want to pin? What should you pin? What do I suggest you pin? I will have pin posts that introduce your brand or most popular products. Right? For some kind of business, it could be an introductory video. Welcome to our space here. We don't judge, we don't do this, we don't do that. Just enjoy the ride. I'm the CEO. My name is Didi. I'm the CEO of this. Welcome to our space. Uh, we are a brand that is very much interested in seeing you have money the way you should or hit your financial goals the way you should in the shortest time possible. Just be an introductory video. It could be introductory offers. It could be free offers. It could be crucial tips, right? It could be one of your best performing content. If there's something your prospect like about that content, pin it, right? It could be customer testimonials or reviews. It could be your physical store images or video. It's not something propelling, right? That can support your point of the fact that oh, we are reliable, we are good, you can buy from us. You can do what you said you can do. Right? Highlight promotions, um, limited, limited time offers or customer testimonial, right? You can also use pin strategically to cross sell or upsell. We talked about that in class, right? Cross selling, upselling related items too. Another thing is to make sure each pin post has a clear call to action. I do that a lot. So I always want a call to action. I tell you to order something, I tell them to do what? Right? Um, regularly update pin posts to match your current goal. So for instance, now I want to start pushing one other item. My, I'm going to likely, go, I'm going to change my pinned post on the flash drive shop soon. Right? Because I want to push another item. So I'll switch it up. And put videos of that item. I told you I'm setting content from two creators. Once it comes in, I'll switch that up. Right? So it's important. It's something you can also do. Huh? On pin and pin post according to your current push in that particular page. Right? If the page does multiple things, maybe sell shoes, but this, this, that, that. But that advertising shoes, I want to put some other shoes to buy so that people can look at shed some on one, put another shoe on one, put another item. That people know, oh, you also sell short, it also sells this. Right? So you can regularly update the pin post to match your current goal. Now, what's special about your offer? This speaks to your, um, remember I said your ad, the creative itself. What's special about it? Why should I leave Femi, my very good friend, and come and buy from me? Why should I leave a motor learning like Sally and Sarah and come and buy from me or and Sarah stuff? Right? So you find your unique selling points. Sometimes you might have to push the customer to think about what their USP is. Or unique selling offer, even if it's not even unique selling point that you have as part of your business, that offer should have something unique in it. So you are buying this and this from us, you are getting free this. I like buy anti blue light lens from us, you are getting free pack, free box, for you to put it at the same. So there's stuff like that. So um, craft an offer that speaks to your audience needs or desires. Should be something they are over there, they want to jump on, right? They want to they enjoy. I mean, some there's, there's a woman that used to buy my ring light every year, but she gives, she sells stuff to young girls. So she needs it to just make them feel happy. So that is doing the hard work and saying they're getting free ring lights. You know, I'm able to want ring light in this Nigeria. Right? So that's an offer that speaks to what they need. Example, limited edition, exclusive discount, money back guarantee. Those are some options. Uh, make it time sensitive to create urgency and drive immediately. To, to drive immediate action. Also focus on benefits that resonate 
it's your target audience. So there are many people who tell us that you don't advertise products with features, right? You advertise them with benefits. For instance, when they are advertising um, Samsung, you will not say it is GH4, whatever, whatever, ultra, ultra something, something, um, um, video or camera. What they will tell you is it snaps so well, you look this thing, this thing. So they just show you images of somebody that is that you know, this thing is now. They're showing you benefits, right? I'm um, somebody that is running and you take a video of the person, the person is not buffering, right? So things like that, they want to show you the benefits. Tell you snap so clear, you don't have to use your glasses, something like that, right? These are like the taglines they use or the copies they use. So display the benefits, not just the features. Now, who is in the best position to patronize? This is also under our rule. You know, I've hammered on this a lot. Don't come on. There's an there's a added to say in my own in my town. Where they say if you want to target, if you go somewhere, you want to catch the whole bed. If you want to catch the whole bed, there's a high chance you end up with nothing. But if you just target one, bam, she grab it ASAP, right? There's also another analogy they gave us one time in, in one event I ran for where they said. They did a, an analogy, they did a, an experiment, right? Uh, in the in wildlife um, spaces. And they marked, put a mark on a zebra's body. And then they now notice that every time you put that mark, that zebra gets killed by the lion, gets killed by the lion, gets killed every time. So trying to join the experiment, this is spoiling the experiment. Actually, they now later found out that. So when that zebra, you know, so when zebras are together and they are flocked, because of that, they are color. It makes you not to know where this person's head is, where the other person's head, who has this body, who has that leg. You almost will mix things up, right? But then the fact that they mark that the particular zebra, every time they mark the new zebra, it makes it easier for the lion to catch. Because all it does is, oh, I'm looking at one with red mark. Let me just be looking at that red mark. Because that red is the only different color amongst them. Just in black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, everywhere. But you just started seeing that red. So you, you just target that particular one, and then many times it's successful in catching it, and of course, killing it and eating it. Right? So um, that is to speak to that, right? Who's in the best position? Don't hang on to anomalies. Define your ideal audience and tailor out their interests. Use demographics, location, and behavior to target effectively. Remember, quality over quantity. Right? So target the most likely to convert. Avoid broad targeting. The more specific, the better result. Use data from past campaigns to refine your audience. So, so yeah, drawing those ads, you are refining your audience. Good ad result is not about how long. This is also one serious mix. I always want to keep on. So sometimes somebody will reach out to you, I want to run an ad. And then the next thing they are saying, so how long? I want to run 20,000. Okay, so how long? Can we do it for 14 days? You say, ah, 14 days, Bao. So quality over quantity, right? Shorter impact to ads often perform better. And I told you guys why. So somebody is giving me, but then you say you want to spend an you want to do an ad of 10K. That can be maybe 10 minutes of, of show time, right? And 10 minutes are shown by um, this thing. By, by, let's just say, by, 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 by seven. Let me just say, they give you seven minutes. So you divide it by seven. That means one minute per day. Now, is it wise for you to spread that one minute on a Monday? Where you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday. Hey, you know, the people are active in, at work. Somebody can see your ad and say, I need to see other. Before you know, a guy just opens the door and says, Get me this, this document now. And that one has dropped the phone. I forgot she was about to order something, right? So the distractions are usually high in the weekdays. So for me, I will avoid running the ads weekday. I'll now come on Thursday or Friday and start the ad. Right? And start the ad because I start the ad because I know I'm managing my budget. So let me put it at the time frame. There was there are even sometimes I run ads only on a Sunday. I will never run Thursday or Friday. I run Saturday Sunday. Sometimes only Sunday. And that's because I want to manage my ad spend at the time. There's no point spreading it across across the board. Doesn't make any special difference, right? But it might be you shooting yourself on the day. So 
consider time when is the audience most active and ready to buy, right? Test different days or time, analyze what works best. Yes, you can also test. I had this long app guys that I worked for one time where sometimes I run the ads. When we work, I don't when I first started, I would run it every weekend. I'm not seeing results. I was seeing results only on I think the third week or third one week. Right? That's why you don't talk about it very like, ah, it's true. People just collect their salary. So there's no point advertising to them on week one. So let's leave week one. Let's start with two and with three when we know that Sapphire is all over there. Right? Sapphire is all over there. That's when we now take out our ads for. So we left out week four and week one. Week four, two, people just collect their salary. So you know the rush. Right? Um, avoid wasting budget by, by extending your ad length. Focus on creating ads with a strong call to action. So, um, of course, you've done this one already. You've done, uh, you've done, we've gone through meta ads already. So, um, I think that's that for me. Is there any question? Another question time. Question time. Are we practicing silent nights? <laughs> yeah, we are preparing for Christmas song, Abby. Silent night. Please don't silent night on me. Let me hear a question. Did I start calling names? Um, sir. So, okay, it's Agnes. Um, What's your you know, name, please? I'm saying Emmanuel Disu. I don't know any Emmanuel Disu. Yes, that's that's my husband's advice. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> What's your own name, Agnes? Agnes Disu. Agnes Onyeferi Disu. Yes. Fire on Agnes, please. Okay. So, you know, when you were talking about considering timing, you know, when your audience are most like active, you know, are ready to buy. I'm like, can you really, can you really dictate? Don't these things change? Like, it's not bound to, um, to not be constant. Like, things like timing. You know, there was a particular time when you know when I even if I want to make posts and all that, I'm, I will go and I will go and browse. You know, for this platform, what's the best time to post? You know, they'll give you a timeline, you know, and all that. But after a while, I would just be like, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> sometimes as a business person, you're just you're fighting for your life. So you are just like, you know what? Regardless of what's happening, one thing I'm going to ensure I do is show up, you know, just show up. Something like that. So sometimes the idea of this timing, I don't know. Can you be really sure about um the fact that that's the time that your ad will do well? Um or is it something that is like a secondary information or something that we should actually put in mind that if you don't know the timing, like you need to really determine the timing before you can actually, you know, put your ads out? Like, is it primary or secondary information? Okay, well, to start with the first one you mentioned, um, I didn't say anything about posting timing because, like I said, I don't want to put everybody in the box. I'm more... I'm more of a preacher of consistency than a lot of um, principle, 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 right? So I don't want to give you guys too much that will make you say, ah, I can't keep up with this one, that one. Even though you can actually schedule your posts, right? But then you can plan your posts for the next one. You can schedule it even on your phone. You don't even have to go to the back end. But then, yes, there's somewhere you can check online to see where your Followers are most active and all that. But I really don't teach that. Not because I don't think it's a good thing to do, but because I don't want to overburden. It's more important to teach, to show up first. That's the most important. Even me, I don't I don't really go and check my followers or whatever. I just do my posting and try and consistent that it always show up. 
the day somebody will come and want to check you out, too, what they will do to check out other posts, right? Any other things, I would just be on my page. I would just go to my page. I would see notifications. Somebody liked one post I made since in 2020. And I'm surprised. How did you go that low? Even me, sometimes I say, but I can't go down. Right? So that's for that. So I don't want us to overthink the whole timing as regards posting. Now, as regards ads, there are just some standard, you know, as digital marketers, we are deep thinkers, right? You know, sometimes, even where we're having conversations in class, I know for a father, sometimes I come up with some really nice things, but it's because I, I, I think deep, I've been thinking deep over time. I said, I just come up with some stuff, and you just like, ah, did I think about this? Even me, sometimes I'll say something, and even me, I'll be shocked. It's my own self. Ah, it should work. I mean, I've never thought of this. But it's in class, and I'm teaching now. I'm not even really thinking, but it's just that I'm teaching, I'm thinking deep. As I'm saying, um, for instance, um, my brain is already digging something here, right? So we are deep thinkers. So we think about things over time. For instance, we just think about things like month, when it's close to month end, the weekend before month end, or month end weekend. It's just naturally looks like a good time to start talking about, hey, buy this, buy that, because you know that people are almost in their buying space, right? Sometimes in the month, it's just almost like that. Salary will soon come. So, meaning somebody will soon spend money. Right? Um, things like understanding that people are more, more active on their home weekends than they are weekdays. Those are just normal thinking level. If I say it, it's something you can easily agree with. Even looking at yourself as an example. Right? Because weekdays, you might be sorry, see now I'm in class. I'm not touching my phone, but it was a weekend. I wish I could have touched my phone back to back within the last how many hours I will be talking here, right? Just because I'm doing something. So we have more people who are active, actively, or let me say, let me say distracted from their phone on weekdays than you will have on weekends. So just like some small, small, so you all need to also start thinking. Uh, yeah, well, how do I think that um, this and this, you can also research it and search online where are the most uh, times that you think people can be actively on active on their phones or on social media channels like Instagram or for instance, Instagram social media channel when are people most likely active. It's just normal thinking process. You just have to think a little bit deep, deeper. Just like I said, I was only out for that long company for a while and I was seeing that there were more responses on certain times. So we just have to think about it. Why are we getting more responses at this time? Hmm. We did be this, 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 and then we then found that oh, salary time and beginning of the month salary still remain. Okay, that makes sense. It adds up, right? So can we know for sure, for sure that this is where people maybe not, but we can do some one plus one and this approach to like oh, okay, this is a an understandable reason, right? If yeah, just like some of the things that I say in class. I defend it because there are things that I've tried, I've done something, but even to you, as you are hearing me, you are like, hmm, it makes sense. That's the way I'm saying people come to your page to size you up. It's something I do, something a couple of people do. Do I know for sure that, hey, you are entering my page? Somebody does not just come and say, hey, where from? I'm coming to your page to size you up. No, they don't. But just by thinking it deep, I want to be sure that your money is not entering into wrong hands. Everybody wants to be, nobody likes to be scammed. So how do I how do we, I second check things? How do I second check? You know, if I'm doing it, it means some other people are doing it. And then I've spoken to some other people, they used to do this. And almost all the classes I've been to, and I've said, we want to be truthful for ourselves. How many of us to check things that how many, how many of us to check the push page you want to buy something for them? Like go and scroll through the profile to see and size them up. And a lot of people raise their hand. And it gives me the further knowledge to solidify that this thing. If you do a census here. We also realize that a lot of people to do the same. Oh, Agnes, let me even speak to you directly. When you want to buy two things online, don't you go to people's page to size them up? That's true. True. Yeah, I do. Yes. So we almost cannot know a lot of things we can't know for sure, but we can see the overwhelming evidence. Are there evidence to this? Are there evidence to people doing that? Is it something I can do? Is it something that makes sense? Is it something that adds up? So I'm not sitting here and saying, but you throw away your thinking caps. Anything I say, accept. No. That's what I'm always saying. Give me a problem. Ask me. So I can now explain that, oh, this is why I'm standing behind this point. So the point of running ads weekend, doing this, this is why I'm standing behind it because it's just logical. And some of my numbers are proving it over time. When I run ads from Monday to Sunday, I see that I get better reactions or responses. 
on weekdays, on weekends, and I have a weekdays. Great, thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome, Emmanuel. This way. <laughs> um, other question, please. I Google people's opinion online processing down for any products. Yeah, so okay, people go and look for it. Concerning what? Go on, Esther. Go on. Okay, so concerning what you were saying concerning um the time, what Agnes was saying concerning the time, the how to analyze what time your audience are online. Can we use um probably the time that people uh most you know when, when people comment or or what would I say or like our pictures? No. I think I think we're going to see it. No, there's actually Can an we... actual when you check professional dashboard, there's an actual Break down there. Look for it when you open your professional. The natural, it, it has the exact. You don't have to deduce that one. Instagram tells you directly. So click on your professional dashboard. Maybe go to settings somewhere there. You find it when your audiences are online. So it has a breakdown. The time frame okay. on the day of the week. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're so not much. you're not thinking about that one. Anybody else, please? So I have a question. <laughs> please go on. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, you know why um, this is very resounding for me because um, I've had experience with, you know, managing someone's page and I, I did very poorly. So a lot of things, I, so I was telling someone this morning that I wish I knew what I know now. A lot of the mistakes I made, I I fumbled. Oh Jesus! It, it's 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 ah uh, no 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 no. Um. So th at some point I was like, okay, I, I do a social media. So I, I went ahead to say, oh, um, I got a few people to say, okay, um, I'm going to handle your page. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. In fact, one particular um, one particular uh, food business. Even reached out to me said to say, okay, handle our page, the paid money. <laughs> After they finished paying money, I was like, okay, just to come up with posts now, I, I can write, I can come up with content and just put it there, you know, and all that. But the problem was the, the people were really expecting that what I do is going to get people to start calling them, you know, to start, you know, doing all that. And for me, I was like, I'm just going to keep posting every day. I didn't charge anything for ads. So my mind, you know, it didn't, it didn't occur to me that I even need ads, you know, nothing like that. I was like, hey, we'll grow the page organically. And the, the worst part of it was that we're going to start afresh. They needed new pages because what they had, they, they wanted, they requested that they wanted new pages. So... Imagine growing a new page. Like, all that taught me so much. After a while, everybody was not happy. Me, I was not happy. They were not happy. <laughs> so I told <laughs> myself that. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I didn't hear. You said something. No, I was just laughing when you said everybody was not happy. Yes, everybody was not happy. So I felt bad. They felt bad. If I, it got to the extent that I told myself, I'll never, I'll never even think about, you know, handling anybody's page. I took down everything. It's like, no, I'm not going to do this again. Uh, I thought it was, you know, that's when I realized that it's actually not a book in the park. Like, I was just thinking it's just, I would just post every day and all that, but it's, it's a lot of work. So my question now is, when it comes to handling pages, you know, and all that, like, what, what's one thing that you can use to really grow a page, especially maybe when you are starting from afresh? What's that? What are those things that you can use to grow pages? I mean, someone is saying, oh, handle my page. And probably that page is really very, like, it's new. Or they just even created it. Um, and what are the expectations? What are the things that, um, because I feel like I, I would have maybe given them a disclaimer that um, this is new. Um, they shouldn't expect miracle. Because I think they were expecting that um, as soon as they start putting stuff um, on social media in one month, you know, they are going to start getting people calling them and they are, they are shocked with, with, with bustling with people. I think that was the expectation. So everybody and me, of course, now I would want to hide myself. So I would tell them, ah, I told them, oh, don't worry, don't worry. 
So, please, I want to know what are the things I did very wrong, and um, what what uh, what are those things I would have done that would have really maybe helped um salvage the situation. Thank you. Well, that's really um uh, one of those things. One of those questions I've been expecting to hear, and it's really practical. Like one of some of the major issues that you guys are going to face. So I really love and appreciate that question. Now, first off, one of the things I always like to tell people is it's better to underpromise and overdeliver. Put you in a better space than overpromise and underdeliver. Right? Always, always. That's why I, when I'm by them, I'm telling you that ah, we not bring you customers. It's not that I just cry and say, ah, I won't bring you customers. I say, hey, my job here is to do this, I do this, I do that. So promise you a kind of client to be me overstretching. Right? But then you're going to get empires, you're going to get people. Just follow your business, follow your brand. Do, 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 do. So it's not like I would come out now and shoot myself and let's say, hey, you will not get customer out. So, ah, you know, that's scary as a business person. I want to spend money. So I'm trying to also help us understand how I say it. So it's not like I just outside say, hey, you know, you know say, let them understand that, hey, this is the major goal for me to get you in the face of people who are likely going to take action, going to get you people who want your product. Now, if you close them, that's left for you to do. Do you get? Like, I now, putting effort, my effort is toward them actually getting customers. As I say, I'm trying to review, I'm trying to ask them their offer, okay, let me understand your business, what now, what now, what can you push? Oh, okay, there's this, just like he, right? He is doing into perfume. She has products, she wants to say, I'm telling them, if it was me that is here, this is what I would want to do, I want to see those packages. So you have like five or six of them that you brought together, body mist, um, some of those oil perfume, maybe one oil perfume, one body mist, two other kind of perfumes, or three other kind of perfumes, and you put them in categories 10k, 15k, 20k, 30k, tickets. If that looks like something that somebody will just quickly want to buy, oh, is it five? Is it another the price of those five together? But you mix them the way you have the ones that are also good, premium, and are 40k, 50k, so that somebody who wants to spend that amount can spend without having to think. Which of them make, which of them make, but you mix everything. There's the body spray is there, the roll on is there. So almost like your entire part. Funny thing is that I've been, I've been a customer of somebody for this exact same thing for the past three three years since after COVID. Every year I always buy one of those assets, and I use it for like a long time. I'm not particular about person. I like spending good, but I'm not particular about the brand, the this, the that. So things like that. So you have to understand the person's business, understand what we work. Would I buy something like this? Put yourself in the customer shoe, in the business shoe. Go the extra mile as though you want to get them customer, but don't promise. So when you not believe, I say, ah, okay, okay, you did it. And then I even got customer, I got test, I got second one. Do you get so that for me is quite important. Now, how do you go a page if you are starting afresh? So the thing is, because we have gotten to a world where it's almost hard, we've gotten to a stage in social media marketing where it's organic is a serious thought or a serious work. Right, one of the first thing you have to do is your content has to now be relative, relatable. Right, a lot of UGC gives good attention, a lot of collab. So you need to start thinking of collaborations. Collaborations, I mean, you are posting here, you are tagging somewhere else where somebody has some form of attention. You are doing quality content that people want to share. For instance, yesterday night, I slept really late. In fact, as I was talking to you guys, some I'm minutes mean, ago for this question that is tearing my eye up. My eyes are just closed. I was talking to you guys and closing my eyes, right? And that's because I had a meeting last night where somebody was talking about, she wants to start a brand, she wants to talk about a different young girl, a lady. She wants to talk about um, faith, fashion, da, da, da. We were talking about the Monday motivation, for instance, what you do on a Monday. So no Monday motivation, you don't drop some affirmations and like that, like that. So one of the things that came to my mind was that, okay, this is a Monday affirmation. Don't come and just say, I am this, I am that. No, let's give you the personalized touch. Can you do something like, oh, me, you are gorgeous. So this week, go and be good, go and be that, go and be this, do this. I see you doing this. I see you be great getting that. Those appointments are yours. Da, 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 da. And again, you can say, well, share this with your loved one. Let them know how important they are to you. So you are not coming out and just doing the... So that content looks to me like something that is shareable. I can just come on this and say, ah, here I send this to my guy. He's, he's talking about this. A major target are ladies. So one lady can feel like sending it to another lady. You know, ladies know how to love up on each other. So, with that rare me vibe, 
the very calm now she has a better calm and soothing voice than me. <laughs> so the other me did not hit my own mouth. But it gives I don't know, but you listening to me say or rare me, something like that, it gives a little personal touch, tricky, something that somebody can share. Somebody can say, hmm, send it to my friend. Like that you say share this with somebody. So then you start thinking of relatable content that are mostly shareable, right? Mostly shareable and um, that can give you good good attention. So your content has to just move, live from being the normal uh, simple things, right? No, don't just do the normal simple things. Do something a step for a step higher, more work. People now go as are doing badass trans transitions. You have to start learning how to use some of those tools. You can't break into the market with just doing the barest minimum, right? And the next thing is you have to spend money on ad. Ad is also another thing that can push you. Especially if you are not doing so well with the creativity and content. Ad is the next thing. I was telling you about how a mentor of mine used to say that any platform that comes out tomorrow, the first thing he wants to learn is how to run the ad. How to get paid attention. He does not have time to come and struggle with everybody and be getting this organic one. Right? So that's also another thing you can do. Me now, if I need followers, you see that my key ring ad that I did that, that got me a lot of followers. Anytime I'm just tired, I say, I need attention this week. I'll just turn around that. That guy always gives me attention, gives me follows. Because some client tries to run ads for it's a, a particular ad. Yeah, if I run that particular one too, the followers used to just, just show up. I've been running one ad now since yesterday, test something. The two of them have done illegal. I've gotten just like two followers since yesterday. But that other product, that same since yesterday, I've gotten a lot more. But this one was for another intent. Right, but the same goal, the same page visit and everything, but you see different results, right? So all of those things are possible strategy, but content is like at the fore of it, like at the center of the whole thing. Like content is super, super crucial. It's content that will cause me to go viral. Right? Someone can just see one of the content and say, ah, let's share, share, let me share. Well, one person should share two, three, four, bam, and you see yourself everywhere, right? So that's how it works. It's mostly content that makes people go viral. So, uh, Manuel, this week, I think that's your answer. Unless you need more clarification. <laughs> okay. Sir, to be honest, when you were saying these things, right, I just realized that if you're going to really sit down to start creating content, it means, and you said something about not just create, um, doing the barest minimum. So it means you are actually going all out, you know, on you know, finding out more about the, the brand, knowing exactly what the customers need and all that. That's looking like a lot of work. So if, for example, now you really want to say, okay, you want to go into handling of pages, you want to actually go into daily postings, you know, all those other things that um, these people are supposed to do for themselves, you decide that you decide that you go and do it by yourself. How, how much now can you now, uh, because it's not looking like you can handle too many brands at the same time, because I'm not seeing how you want to be effective if you really want to say, okay, you're following these things the way you have said it. So how much do you now collect from a brand that will not ensure that it, it actually gives you, you know, I mean, return for your, for your time that you're going to spend? Because it's not looking like you can take up too many brands, especially if you're the only person doing it. Yes, so that's one of the things two of my um instructors, should I call them instructors? Or let me just let me just say two of my moms has have been warning me about in the past uh months, right? And that's as to the fact that hey Casey, you need to start bringing up a couple of other people who can help you scale up this thing. Because people meet I said in fact the way one of the days it's sunk in. I was actually listening to a um a church a church message it wasn't really that what the person was the speaker at the time was saying was that um as a pastor before you can really have a very blown up branch or very blown up pastoral work or ministry you have to become pastors of pastors right and what that then translated to me in this industry is that you have to get to a point where you are not just the one doing the work you have editors you have whatever, but what you can now work around is like frameworks. That's why I'm also a framework person. That's why I came up with all of these frameworks, how to get content da, 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 and content sources and everything, right? It's one of those things that I'm really good at. Once I've planned a framework for a business, I've planned it. So you see that yesterday that I said we did all of the whole 
we did all of the whole work from Monday to Monday to Sunday actually. Like we came up with all of the content plan. And if I'll be honest with you, I initiated it. So I thought about the whole thing, and then I initiated it with AI with ChatGPT. And ChatGPT gave me some some. That's why I did thing up for tools like that. It speeds up some things. So ChatGPT then gave me some framework, and then I now we worked the framework. Like of course, ChatGPT is not the one that told me already. I mean, I was gonna talk about it. So it gave me some small tips and I then fine tuned everything and then bam. So I came up with all of those in roughly roughly an hour plus. So not even up to an hour plus. I came up with that with like what I told the person to do was okay, tell me all the things you want to talk about in your social media page. And then I came up with username, name, um, bio write up, everything. So the time I came up with all of those, I then gave back to review. So we were reviewing it on a call and our call was roughly like two hours. And then we did all of those in two hours. So, you get, so by the time you understand some of these frameworks, there are ways you can put it in tools like I said, ChatGPT, and they just bam, give you what you want. Just like we were doing that day in class when I was saying, I need a skincare, blah, 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 a review that will do me this, 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 this. I, said, I, I gave it all the possible English. And then with that, I can tell you, it's give me 50, 50 more. If by that day, I think I told you, just give me one caption or something. I can tell you to give me 50 captions. But then it gives me that I have 50 content for that's almost content for like how many how many months? Maybe that's it. That that of course that review might be I want to post it like twice a week. So that's for 25 weeks. Do you get so if, if that's the case, you can do that for some other particular whatever. Yes, so it's just for you to first take your time to hack exactly what you want to do as it has the content. So by that you now say, okay, you want to start writing scripts, maybe the videos you want to do and talk about them. Right, but then there are some sides of the creativity that comes with uh what's the word now? Um that comes with deep thinking or deep research ahead. There are cases like that, but there are some of them that can come with framework that once you hit the main framework you want. And sometimes when I'm thinking of something for a brand and I've seen, I've done, I'm reading, reading the prompt, reading the prompt like four or five times. Once it has given me what I want, I just tell it, give me 30 more, give me 40 more, give me 50 more. And I already have that same thing replicated 50 more times and I'm good. Right. For instance, this is my Android box. One of the things I've done is that when I was strategizing, I've thought about, thought about, I've think, thought, 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 thought. I came up with, I was struggling with explaining to people how the item works. And I went to ChatGPT, I told it, told it, told it, the things I could tell it. When he gave me what I wanted, I just asked for three more options. I have a friend who sells for me. I gave him one. I took one. I also came up with um, captions that can go with my ads when I start pushing it. I have three or four of them already. I came up with um, short copies that can go up with the delivery. I'm uploading a video of my TV when I'm watching it. Or, so I've told it I want something to spark more interest, to be able to convince people that this item is good for them. Say it in a fun, loving way. Or do it, it, it. That's giving me, done the mistake, done the mistake. That's giving me what he wanted. I told it, oh, yeah, give me 30 more. So I have 30 of it somewhere. Bam. So by the time I'm not doing copy paste, copy paste, somebody thinks that I'm just thinking about it. I thought about it before. Done everything and bam, I have 13 more, 14 more already waiting for me. So these tools can help. Another thing that can help is maybe start thinking of having a team. It also helps. A team in the sense that, or oh, somebody that can run your edits, somebody that can, there are a lot of things that, all of these things that I, I'm doing. That's what I was saying the other day in class that there are social media managers, that, but then there are us, that are these other that can oversee almost everything. So I have some people that if I need some things and I don't want to do it myself, I can chat them and say, hey, can you do this for me? I'll pay them or not free, not a, not the user, but and there's some people who are also willing to do it for me for free, but then I also always want to pay. So, like the video I told you about that I did it. So, somebody else that did the video, I oversaw it or changed this, don't add this, remove this, put this. I know what I want to get, I know the the feeling I want to push out. And if you have not hit it, I'll tell you, you have not hit it yet. Can you change this? Can you tweak this? And all of that. So, maximizing the tools that are available out there is one, and then, um. I'm also a, I'm also somebody who knows how to work with what is available. So for instance, if I'm somewhere and I don't want to show my face, I can think of content, for instance, after this class now, maybe I remember I have not posted something for somebody. I can think of something, a sap and post, right? Like it's me, I know how to utilize what is available. And I, I don't know whether, I, I don't want to just say it's me, but I want to think of putting something around it. And that's maybe by reason of trying out stuff or using stuff or feeding your eyes with stuff. Maybe that's what I say. If I just know it just come out. So if I'm 
I'm in a tight so if somebody calls me and it's a tight, tight spot, he say I want to put something down and what can I do? What can I I'll come up with something but the high time I'll do something. Right. So uh, I think those are like my submission on this matter. I don't know if that works. If you need further clarification, please let me hear. Because I know that as I'm answering you, it's affecting some other people. So please, and they don't want to ask by themselves. So please. Ask <laughs> no, I think this is very helpful. But one area that I'm really deep thinking is the aspect of creating a team. Now, creating a team, you know that thing when, I don't know how to explain this. So there was a particular time that I didn't know how to um, do video um, video edit at all. Like I, I didn't know anything at all. I had to work with one other video editor guy. So uh, I would sit down with the guy, I'll be telling him, see, I, this is what I want. Because most of the time, people who are technical, I've realized that people who are technical, hands-on, they, they are not very creative. And that's not, it's not, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I don't know how to explain it. People who are technical sometimes, most times, they are not, um, they are very good with what they do, but sometimes they, they are not able to like look at, um, draw into like creative juices sometimes. So the guy is like, this is the way I do things. Met, one, sorry, two, three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You met, you met the wrong one. Oh, sorry, okay. I don't agree with that. You met, okay. you met yes, you met maybe I've, I've met wrong, wrong one, sir. So, yeah, what? <laughs> So I, I would tell the guy, okay, see, I want this, I want it to look like this, like this, like this, like this. And he's like, okay, it should be like one, two, three. So I literally would have to sit down with him. So over time, I'll keep telling him, um, this is how I want this up. Over a couple of um, weeks, somehow, somehow, I started editing by myself. So I, I'm not now saying, oh, I want this. I, I just really would just sit down and start to draw it from what I have seen him do i'll start moving it from one thing to the next one thing to the next you know and all that so sometimes i have issues when maybe you are working with people i know sometimes it might look like oh i want um things to be perfect exactly the way um I'm i want it trying. to look yes. just like that but the problem <laughs> is how do you now ensure you have quality control where um you're trying to be as creative as you can as a person like you won't try to push yourself like out of the you know the usual regular stuff and then, then you now have a team problem now is sometimes it's not easy for you to replicate yourself you know so you now have people who um they are doing their best but you now feels like they're just not so it feels like you're literally trying to drag so when they come up with stuff you are literally going back to do their work over again i don't know if anybody has experienced this but um sometimes working with a team can be like that so how do you not ensure that everybody on your team is like top notch, like actually just bringing out their best and putting their best foot forward or something like that? Or how do you ensure that you are able to, you know, just, you know, carry the, the, the idea in your mind and just like replicate it in the people that you work with? Assuming you you actually want to create it. <laughs> is, is it this is intense. So two things, building a team is work serious work right uh what, what i mean by serious work especially if you are building the people who are not yet there right like they're in their learning phase is serious work and not everybody have the patience to do it but i all of this i wanted to quickly say was that i may not even be the best person to answer this question <laughs> because i've not successfully built one in that regard however the way where you can manage these things number one is that you can work with people who are also experts and when I mean, what I mean by that is, uh, for instance, like I said, the video I pushed that is an expert, but just be ready to pay more. That's what we mean when you hire an expert. Uh, it means you can't pay less per se, but then you can. But the other side, the other side of working with a novice means you guys can grow together, but then ready to make some errors. And the way you can manage that is you should also know how to do this thing so that when you see, spot the errors, you can quickly fix it and move on so that you don't delay your client and all of that. Right. Um, also, if I some of them, I'm working with one guy now that's helping me fix something. In my head, I'm I'm crazy. I, I can't. I'm almost mad, running mad. Like, guy, can't you just update me? What's going on? Client is always buzzing me. The other one, he is delaying, he's dragging, he will not be online. One, two, one. How do people work like this? You've been on this particular fix. We're going to fix something. You've been on it almost for one week. 
it's not my kind, it's not my style. So in my head, once I'm done with this guy, this one particular one, I'm not working with that guy again. Because I can't deal. It's not my thing. Trying to be calling me. I'm trying to yeah, I'm, 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 I'm working on it. I'm up. If I'm working on something, I'm trying to fix somebody's ad account for instance. I'm fixing it, fix it today. I want to move. I'm crying person, please can we have this for so that I give it your job and play it off my table tomorrow? Something else can come. I want you to do something else, right? So yes, you always meet people with different principles or work attitude, attitude to work and all of that. But you are saying you are building your team. That is something you have to cope with, right? Unless you you now want to work with for instance, I've been talking about the second video for this mind. Um, this and I paid the person. If I paid this particular person more than I paid the first person that I've delivered, and this person has not still delivered, right? So there are people like that. Uh, but like I said, if you are open to building a team, you are open, you are also opening yourself to collecting that bus bus. So it comes with it. It's like a full package. You can't run away from it. <laughs> only if you choose to work with professionals. And the only other way to meet, manage things is give your clients. A longer time frame. So if I'm telling this person, I need this thing. I'm telling the clients I will deliver on Monday. I'm telling this person that I told the clients I'm delivering on Friday. So that bad as bad if it's fun, month start Sunday I will receive my thing and I can still meet up with my Monday, right? So that's one of the ways I manage it, kind of. Or if I know that this person messes me up sometimes, I will stretch the time, put like another three four days on it, so that when the person messes me up, the mess up doesn't end up messing me up. So I hope that helps. Um, yes. So I have another question. Okay, let me take the card and you come back again. Okay. Inka, so I'll allow you to think about the question very well and bombard me. Inka. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Not like I'm asking a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I was just going to like add up to what Agnes said about this is one thing I know about creative world, yeah? You trying to do something, you have an idea in your head. That's one thing. I think where you have to start from is sharing your vision or your goal about a particular project with the person. That is where it starts from. So you all come up with ideas. You might have this thing of this is how you want to do it. Trust me, you have it all figured out in your head. Yeah. Putting that, putting it down is a thing. And because you have it, this is how you want to do the video. Doesn't mean that is the right approach to go about it. Which is why I said. Having a goal to, okay, this is how you are also handle this particular video, this particular campaign, it is a thing. And I'll tell you, trust me, having a team helps. But like Maga said, it comes with a lot of bad goals. Because we are all different people, we think differently, we handle things differently. It is just about we coming to like a particular point and then, know, okay, this is what we are trying to achieve. So what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Everybody brings their thoughts into it one place and then you can move forward from there. You get, I think that's like where you're supposed to start from. Not just telling him, do this, do this, do this. You get, he has been in the game for like a while too, wherever it is, that it is, do you get? And trust me, they've had like experiences and all of those things. Maybe you work to a novice, maybe you work to a professional. Trust me, these things still happen. I'm telling you, I've had wedding, photo wedding photographers abroad that, that makes like a million dollar annually. And they still have clients that tell them, I don't like your pictures. It happens, not just professional notice. This is about you sharing your goals. This is what I want. And then it tells you, okay, how about we go? And you guys think about it like on the round table and then you come to a conclusion. I think that's like the right approach to go about it. Not just say, do this, do this, do this. You might do it that your way and then it doesn't even convert. You might do it that your particular way and then you ask somebody to critique it and then you tell you, okay, this is totally rubbish. That's the thing. Everybody has different perspective. It is, like I said, it is about you coming to a particular spot and then agreeing, okay, this makes sense. Always try to listen to like other people's thoughts. If you just tell me, like, Magago talks, say, you are working in a bank. All they do in the bank is just tell you do this, do this. There's like a protocol to everything you do. There's like a basic protocol. This is what you have to do. Nobody's wanting your idea. Do it. This is a creative world. It is different from like, it is different. Totally different. Ask for everybody's input. Everybody thinks differently. You never can tell what it is like the next person. It could be an assistant that could actually just pop up something and then trust me. It's going to be one thing that is going to sell out. Sell out. So try and take like a different Thank you very much. to like handling people and then you can, I'm sure you see like a lot, lot of change. Thank you, Inka. Um, that's a good input. There's a side of creatives wanting to be creative. 
I used to remember one guy that would say he should do something. He just decided to open it. Because later on, we realized that he was doing what he was doing it because he said that's what he wants to do. But just like I said, some people understand professionalism in quotes to know that if this client says I should do ABC. He said, let me do my ABC and collect my money and go. What I know is that the person now come back and say, ah, ah it seems it's DE. And I'm saying, I'm that invoice. Ah, let's go see your invoice for DE. Ah, it's not me that says, you see that says, do ABC. I believe that you're ABC now. You get, for instance, if you do local designs, you tell the person that it's so, so amount of changes will make for. So that you not go and then two months later, you come back and say, I want to adjust this change. This and that and that. Ah, you will be like kilo share. So that more like the balance, right? You need to understand, you need to maybe buttress it, say, oh, this is what the client wants exactly. So that's why we want to give the client this, right? So that you can manage it. Like I said, teamwork, a lot of bad goes to come with it. Agnes, let's go again. I think it's, it's me and you question and answer session. And I yes. like it. Since everybody is yes. muted, please go on. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to ask, like, practically, like in real life, true, true, how many clients can you really have part time, especially when you are handling um every aspect of social media marketing for them? Okay, so for a start, I try not to handle every part of social media marketing for people. And what I mean by that is, I don't respond to DMs. That's me particularly. I have, I have other people who do that, but I don't. Reason being that. I, I just feel it's off a business practice because when you want to, when you enter a store, you're chatting with somebody online, you enter a store, you want to continue from where you left off. And I say, um, I was chatting with somebody, and I say, hey, we are sit down. You now start asking the best question again. Hey, so which item are you talking of? It's a bit tiring. I always want that flow. And also, there are some cases where some, somebody is buying five things and you want to just tell the person that, oh, this is your buy. The person says, this is buying five. Can you discount my whatever, whatever for me? You can just quickly conclude and say, oh, sure, I can give you a discount of DDD. Share the owner of the business, close your sale. I leave your closing to you, not me again. Right? Unless we are talking, the only thing that can make me do that is you're talking bigger money. Like you said, I'm a freelancer. You're not paying me a full time month, job money. So, so that you don't start allying me that uh, somebody's in my DM since you did not respond. Like, oh, I'm not ready for all those months. Right? So, uh, how many clients can you handle part time? So, I, that's where having different offers then come in. There's people that you can have conversations around. Posting three times a week. Who said plans I manage three times a week because of how much they are paying? But they are the ones I do five times a week. They are the ones you do. Um, is you structuring your whole workload, right? Uh, there are brands where you, you can plan out, can do the design of everything they want for a whole month and keep it down. You are doing on a daily basis, just posting, posting, posting. So it depends on your workload. You look for a way to manage it. You, we can, a friend of mine in Abu Dhabi, she shoots uh, stops weekend, shoot plenty. Then I did during the week, and she asked for like three weeks, four weeks content. She always has content ahead, right? So that's something you can also plan out, having content ahead. So it depends on the workload you have. So how many people can you now handle part-time? Hmm, I can't say it depends on your capacity and your distractions. When I mean distractions, see now I'm training with you guys. But yesterday night, I already scheduled, it's yesterday night or this morning. Early this morning, like 2 a.m., I already scheduled my posts for today. So why are we talking in class now? My post for like three people have gone up already, right? So it's something that you can, like I said, schedule before. You can never even schedule, but thank God now you can schedule. You can do post things. You can do stuff like that over time, right? So that, like I said, you know, the other time I was, talking, I was talking about maximizing some tools. So that tool can help you to cover more people. So it's now, it's now left for you. So you can actually do as much as five, five to ten people. You can. But it depends on the package they are on. Are they doing five days a week? Are they doing three times a week? How do you manage the design? How do you manage videos? Do you go, how have you structured it? The content plan. You know, content planning now has made things easier to an extent. Since you discovered it. Sourcing for content too has made some things easier since you discovered it. Do you get this now? When would I shoot? When would I make the designs ready? I need to do everything in one week. That's where you now start working it down. But some of these things to an extent. You can do the templates on Canva and share the link with somebody in your team. All you just need to do is change the words here, change the color here, move this here, move this for some template kind of post. Like, for instance, your do you know? I know your do you know comes in a specific kind of content. See that one now is already easy. Right? There are some content that can be in templates for certain kind of clients. Right? All you just need to do is change the background image, 
when we change the caption, change the whatever, whatever, just change certain things, right? So all the structure of the business helps you cover more ground, more clients in this context. Okay, so what does a um what does social media management as you mean? Okay, I want to say okay, I'm handling someone's like I'm managing your page. What 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 am I really required to do? And what are the things I can take out on my own to say oh, no, me I'm not going to do this. Or and then what are those things that are a a like they are constant? And then what are the things that are variables that I can decide not to to do it for you? You know, just like you said that you've said that you're not going to be handling um people's DMs, like they should handle their DMs. So what are those things that it's okay for you to say, well, me, I'm not going to do this part. And then what are those things that are constant, like you cannot say you won't do this one? Okay, so the cons, this is how many managers, number one is content, right? In fact, it's just majorly the three things I talked to you guys. Number one is setup, the overview, the look. But you want to be able to show somebody more that ah, I handle this thing. I'm going to jump on it. It's time to right. So the outlook is number one. Basically the setup, right? The bio, the link tree, highlight cover designs, right? The highlight and highlight cover designs, the pinned content, trigger the stuff, the overview of the page, the feed, how it looks. Those are the things that somebody will judge you with. When you say oh, I handle this page, for instance, if you want to handle somebody's page, you say ah, I tell other pages to handle. Send me their links and now send bam 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 bam. Person now go there and check and size you up basically. So the outlook is number one. Second thing is content. How dope is your content? How creative is your content? Not just the design and the outlook. Design is that part. Let me not say don't just starting from the designs that you do. Starting from the also the so there's a woman. The woman I handle her, her kitchen a food page in the UK. When she sends me she sends me pictures and videos. The video will mix them into reels. Add songs that are bam, give them transitions that are gang, 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 gang. Um, do some design when it's Mother's Day, Father's Day. Mm. When she has a product she wants to push, I do the designs, all of those things. So when somebody sees, when she puts on a status, putting somebody from her who basically is seeing her, who is doing these videos for you, who is doing these pictures for you, who is editing these content for you, you get. So it's the punch lines in the creatives, in the captions, and people who want to look out for, or that way attract people. So, so that, that one is also important. So the creatives, how you make those images into video, how you make those videos into dope videos, how you come up with captions or copies, these ones are leading on you, right? And then the ads too. But the ad is something you can remove based on package. So I'll do ads. If you ask on this package, you'll do ads. We are not on this package, no ads for you. You pay me separately for ads, right? My, my friend in Abuja, she, she, she doesn't do ads. Right, so every time the client wants to run ads, she sends them to me to discuss. Oh, this is how much I'll charge the monthly basis for you to run ads for you and all that. So, add something you can either add or remove. But it's just me personally, I'm always I'm of the opinion, just like I was saying, I'm of the opinion that you can't do social media without ads. As a business, you should know you can't push your social media without ads. But hey, some people say they don't want to do ads, they don't want to major on ads, or they are not, they are not, they put it clearly in their offers that there's no ads here, and people accept it so. I can't fault them for it. They say, this is what I can do for you. And people agree. So some people remove ads. Me, I remove ads to my, in my first offer. Like I have a low offer. That one is the one, there's no ads. But the next one, there's now ads, right? And then, so once there's ads, there, there should be reporting. You should be able to report and update people. Oh, in the past two months, or past three months, three months is one time frame. A monthly report is a time frame. Three months is a time frame. It's based on what you can keep up with. I don't do monthly updates. I do three months because in my head, I'm like, one month is a short time for me to see to see what works and what is not working. So month one is me trying out as many stuff. Month two is me settling down. Month three, I can now get a proper result and say, hey, we've grown this page from this year. It's so, so great. In the past, how many months we've done this, we've done that, right? And I would have figured out which content is giving me followers when I run the ads. Each one is giving me views. Each one is giving me, each one is giving me conversions. So all of those things. So um, those are like essentials. The content is essential. Uh, but the ads may not be essential. DMing customers also may not be essential, right? Like I said, me, I don't do it, so it's not essential. Um, what else? What else do I think? Engaging with clients, of course, I just wanted to comment. That's why me, I'm almost always online. I use a, my house here, I use an unlimited internet, whatever. I mean, I'm going out. If I want to step out, I'll buy one small data that is keeps me up. So sometimes, 
responding to comments and all of those things, it should be something you can do, but you could also tell them you don't want to do that. You should be the one to respond to it, right? Because, for instance, if in an industry that is complicated, respond to your team yourself. You have a comms team in your, in your in-house, whatever. Right? There are some organizations that even have in-house designers. Some of them have in-house receptionists. Like there's a real estate company that I run ads for. The, the receptionist responds to DM, responds to everything. Right? So because of the sensitivity of it, if somebody's asking how much is this property, I don't know. I'm not in the office. I don't know whether they've increased by this. They have person to do that. Because so some businesses have some level of sensitivity that can be triggered when you say the wrong thing. You now say it's 20 million. You now go, or Ghana say, I that's 5 million now. And customer is saying, no, can't do that. Somebody already told me 20 million. It's now cost fight. Right? So all of those things, uh, you might just have to look at the space and see if it's something you want to put your mouth in. So um, those are more like it's engaging with the prospects. Like for instance, the COVID period, I was handling one page. I had to go and, because it's a, it's a daycare school for, I think, children. So I had to go to the location, see people who are within the location and, and start liking their content so that they can start, oh, is this is a daycare center. Oh, okay, okay. Just to grab attention. So engaging um, people's content and it's something that helps the brand that other people see. It's not compost, disappear. Want to try and engage on some content triggers. There are some people on Insta blog today that everybody knows them somehow, somehow, because every content they're always saying something and they're always making sense to an extent. Like, ah, this person, this person, people are going to check them out. They just know them somehow, somehow. Right? So the woman is a big brother. I've got to know her picture. If that her profile picture, I know her. She's always there. I've got to her name, but I know her when I go there, I'll see her. So all of those are kind of part of. Um, things that you can do. Okay, so one last question, please. Please go. So, how do you now? Um, what are the things you consider when you want to charge someone for your work? Yes. Which which part of my work? No, if you want to charge for the social media, you mean that you have like a package, say, um, and then yeah. again, this ad thing. How can someone charge for ads? Because I know that it's supposed to be like per, um, based on your budget or something like that. So how do you now charge for ads? Um, so how do I charge for my social media marketing stuff? I put just, when I started that, remember the first client I had was me 15K, right? And then later, later, after a while, we pushed it to, I think, 45K. And then more recently, 100K. So my minimum of, my minimum stuff is 100K. And I post three times a week. Basically, I have some other English that I wrote there. I really don't do that much for. I have some other English I wrote there. I engage, I do something, something, so that it's plenty. Sure. But then I have those things. But basically, in the morning when I wake up, it's to post three times a week for them. Think of the creative. They have sent me image or whatever. One of the schools that I handle, I've gone there, I've taken pictures, plenty, just on videos. So I just keep planning and using them and they have a staff that sends me picture um picture from schools of course every day I'm not a teacher now so they send me picture of classes and stuff. They send me all of this so I make them into image or video and keep up. So that's so how I now plan to charge this basically what I want. <laughs> I really am not good with this. So that hundred K is there ads inside? Yeah? That hundred K is there ads inside? That hundred k that I, I'm charging, no, there's no ad inside. But, they, but for this particular client, I run their ads sometimes for them, and because she was my first client, the one with real ad is I think the one twenty package. Yeah, yes, I will run your ads for you. So with the uh, one twenty package, how much ad will you will you now run? No, they will give me they will give me ad spend. So when we talk about ads, I said it yesterday in class that we have service charge and ad spend. Ad spend is the money that will go to Facebook. Service charge is now my money. So when somebody when I'm not handling the person's page, I will not collect service charge. For ad spend, they will give me ad spend. It's not from that money. But then I used to advise some people that sometimes because you know that this is for a business, I'm paying 120 for a long time. You want to I just, just manage and remove five kids and be running. I just push yourself. The day they will come to you and say, ah, our page is not growing. You can you can at least push at them to grow something. Do you get that's what that your five small five k can do, but then as you want to run ads officially, say, ah, please bring ads spend. 
when time there's school are closed and they want new this new resumption time, I used to run ads for them. They give me ads time. So that's for that. So yes, I think I've also answered the ads charging part. So me, I have a package for ads. Yeah, I say, oh, want a one of 20k. But then, as I said, I understand business because I'll say, okay, I can run for ads for you. Then you charge, I will charge you 40k instead of 80k. So that's how I do now. But like I said, you are just starting, so you can still bring down your price. I can send that my usual breakdown message I used to send. I can send it to the group. And then everybody can then find soon to suit what works for them. But yes, that's the simple okay. explanation. So if you are Ask if you are creating content charge. like video, if you are creating video for them, do you charge extra for it? No, I don't charge because I'm creating content. So I want the page to be as active as possible. So I don't charge extra. What I've charged you for social media package. I'm the one that come up with video and image image content. Is that is now I will now we would have had a discussion how we sourcing for this video and image. You have content, for instance, there was somebody that reached out to me that she's selling food items. She's doing all this meat sharing and basically food items. So I'm like, okay, how do we plan to be getting content? You'll be sending me pictures. She said, I should get them from online. I say, no, I can't do that. I can't get enough of that picture online. So I closed that matter and that didn't, we didn't work together. So there are some you need to think, okay, well, how will we be sourcing for content? Right? There are some contents that is educative, whatever, maybe a surrogate. Uh, organization and hey, that one can you stock images because I don't want to be you know give a video of somebody coming to do surrogacy. Don't think it's things people want you to put their face on. So that one I can be educating, I can be using stock images and talk about things. Hey, that one is different. But meat and food items are one pictures and videos of it. So um based off on that, sometimes that um so when when somebody said me to do video for them. This is that you are just coming to me to make video for you. I have a friend in Canada. I used to help them edit their videos. But so they will send me images and video. They come up with concepts for it. Julius. That one I charge them separately. Doing video for you, I charge you. Okay. But for that, I'm managing your page. No, we charge you separately. Videos. It's video and image that makes up the content that I promised you now. So it's now maybe I now plan that okay. What if you want something elaborate? Like you actually shoot, you know, those kind of ads. That they shoot on TV. Okay. That you I'll have characters, all that thing. I will tell them I have somebody that they can hire. Okay. And I will talk to my friend and say, "Oh, Baba, one work day. See how much. Or oh, you tell me how much. I, sometimes I might not want to be joining the money. I'll just link them up. So, so when somebody comes to me and say, "Ah, I want to do it. I'm sorry, it's not part of what I do. But I can recommend somebody. That it's not like I'm telling you that, hey, to help with your work. No, I want it to succeed, but it's just something I'll do. Even though I can do it. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I just want to outsource it because I want you to know that, hey, it's not me. Maybe next time, right, when you now tell me, oh, we need that guy again, here, and I can now collect his job and do it, collect my money. But I will not come and charge you so that you don't say, ah, you know, they won't manage now, I pay you one thing, one thing. So I have to manage that relationship and be wise. Thank you. This is very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Inka, your hands are still up. Do you still have questions? Or, or that's the and hold hands. Okay, any other question? All right, it's now now. Any other question? Steph, no question for me. How about Dorani? No question for me. Okay, what was the third phase of social media management to make sure? I didn't get that right. This one is acting up. Oh, that's them um, ads. Not ads, running sponsored ads. So set up um contents and then ads. That's basically what it involves around. No question, guys. No question. I hundred percent certain that we don't have a question. Well, um, I hope by listening to my conversation with Emmanuel, we've been able to get this thing. So um, I think I'll hand over to Seifa. Seifa, are you here? Hi, Sifa. All right, so are we having any issues with our capstone projects? How far have we gone? Let me hear from 
at least one person from each of the group. And let me see what you are thinking, or just you want to share something with me, or you are, we are still keeping everything a secret. We are really in our quiet mood today. Okay, Victor, please speak. Please go on, Victor. All right. So in the we are actually past the we've done our um brainstorming. We already came up with the idea and we've we've arranged our slide. Your line oh. is breaking, Victor. Like really breaking. Am I the only one? Is somebody hearing him clearly? Okay, Time. is it better now? You can hear him clearly. Yeah, I can hear him clearly. Uh, okay, I think it's my own end. Okay, please go on. Okay, so but where I think in the next phase we are supposed to like come up with a digital marketing plan. So I was thinking if you can help give us a breakdown or probably some tips that can help us with that. Okay, welcome to the digital marketing. Well, it's one of the things I talked about when I was talking about um our digital marketing um um I call it strategy, right? Where I was saying that um you should ensure that you you should ensure that you have a goal set up, right? So you have so in your own case, what that we the, what that will look like is basically you find out your audience, right? Who are your audiences? What do they want? What is the business bringing on board? How then do you plan to push this across so, so channels, right? So you now, it's, based off on those channels, you now show us evidence of the strategy. For example, you want to push something on social media, but what would the social media page look like? What would the flyer that you push now look like? What you an ad, the typical ad that you're pushing, what, what's it going to look like? Um, email, email marketing, if it's part of it, what do one of your emails look like? Design something. Um, do you get it? It's basically you saying how you plan to push the business using these digital marketing channels and showing us examples of it. So the website, how's it going to look like? The flyer, what is it going to look like? The ad, what's it going to look like? The profile page, what's it going to look like? Let's see the the outlook. Maybe you can put it on the phone, on the phone uh, frame. You get this what our social media page looks like, our Instagram page, our Facebook page. So it's on the frame, on the phone frame. We can clear overview it, see it there on screen. Don't you don't have to take us to the link itself, just because in case you are managing time, they didn't give you enough time to present, so you have it on the. So this what our social media page looks like. Just see a screen of a phone showing us you have screenshotted you know how you screenshot your phone and then paste it there so you do that so you can see all of those so it's basically you saying how you plan to push or market that particular product because that's what they meet us for in real life when you join an organization they are thinking how do you plan to push our business that's why we are saying that digital marketers can, marketers can fit into almost any brand any organization because everybody wants to push their business so how do you plan to push it that's where you now start coming in. Oh, there's this strategy, this strategy, this strategy. This is how we can use social media. This is how we can use our website. This is how we can use our um, email. This is how we can use this. So that's basically our inputs in this particular project and in organizations as a whole. All right, sir. Thank you. That helps. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Is there no one else? Okay, sorry, sir. I have a question. Yes, Nick. Okay. Um, um recently I've been going through some of the digital marketing um opportunities 
like okay let me check and see if some of these things so sometimes they mention some tools and i'm like oh wow i think i know these things but i don't i don't so but that's even not where i'm going where i'm going is some of them want you like in the place in the place where the offer says okay you're supposed to handle social media pages then they now like try to break it down twitter instagram facebook um linkedin and all now is it professional to say i don't know how to do linkedin twitter i think i can just work on um instagram and facebook only or i don't know do you get question like or do you accept it then try to just do maybe just content creation for those other um platforms that you're not familiar with what do you suggest or what do you advise sorry give me a second my, your voice was cracking on as a result of my other screen can you hear me now can you hear me please yes sir Um, Nikkei, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. All right, sorry, come again. Come again with that last part of the job space and all. Sorry. Okay. So I was I was asking that most times when you open, open, like try to say, okay, I want to go for this particular job since it's remote. Mm -hmm. Let me try to apply. And by the time you maybe it's through Google Forms, and by the time you are filling. They begin to ask, okay, which social media um, platform can you manage well? So we see things like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and the rest. So for is it professional to say I don't do LinkedIn and Twitter? I do just social um just Facebook and Instagram, or what would you advise? Okay, I've been in situations where I've actually told people that I don't do certain platforms. Just so that I tell them ahead. Yeah, they don't see me as a dubious person. Actually, you said, when they now hire you, you now say, actually, you said you can handle this and you cannot. Actually, it's two things. Is it a, so sometimes, when, the reason why they're asking that is they, they want to know the, they, they have, maybe they have major platforms in mind. Or they know that some people can end up saying that uh, and do all or something. But they want to know the major one if, in the context. So I don't know the major one, you are, that is your strength, maybe. So they want to be able to see with that. Maybe that's why they ask that particular one. But then, if generally you're asking me, they say, can you do this, can you do that? Some of these organizations, they don't really know. For instance, I've, had, I've gone for one interview for years back. Yeah, they were talking about SEO. And when we were talking like that, they didn't even know what they, what they were saying. Right? So sometimes they don't know. They just know that people say they need you have to have this. They just copy the JD. Some of these HR, they don't know. So they just copy JD and just paste. Right? And basically, the implication of that is there are sometimes where some people um, apply and they learn on the job. Right? Uh, it's not bad to, to do that. That's if you are open. We are saying now, uh, by the time they say this, oh, I'm open to learning. Me now, I'm not open to doing Twitter. I don't get Twitter power. Right? So if you're open to it, you can get the job and learn on the job. As you are getting the issue, you are jumping on some on call with somebody. Like I told you, that I have somebody that I'm literally one of their staff members in that their office. All their problems I know. If I know everybody in the office and I don't work there. Uh, because in my presence, she has called one person, called Zora, please, we need this. Hey, we, I need this. I'm working with my friend and my friend's place. We are trying to do this. He's calling for this. Everybody, I know them and they know me. It's just that they are not paying me monthly salary. So she's literally learning on the job, right? So there are people like that. They don't sack them because at least they're getting the job done. Whether they are hooked by crook. That they are the ones that people will say, I oh, know we have to sack you. I know we're doing this, 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 that, that, that. So it's your decision. You can take that chance. I don't know if that helps or if that answers the question. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Then you, I have I also have another question, but I'm still trying to frame it. It's in my head. But I've not actually gotten the right English for it. So, but basically it's about um web creation. So I'm giving I don't you want yeah, I'm I think I don't want to be too forward if I have an offer 
and the offer is for social media management then i may be trying to pitch for oh i can help you do um, um your email i can help you create a website and all and all but in case in case um there's an opportunity would you advise that okay just pay for this particular one pay for this one i don't know if you get the question yeah, i'm not clear with that come again okay so um in case there is a there is a an offer for maybe specifically social media manager mm -hmm. uh -huh. or, or okay, before i ask that one let me ask okay, you okay. when we see community managers now does he also apply to um social media management because community can be maybe a telegram group a whatsapp community and all so but do you think it's embedded in social media um, management so usually all of these things in bigger companies in outside the country outside the country it's they are all different things people hire but people hire social media managers for different platforms there's somebody that says I'm, I'm a twitter manager i'm a twitter account manager i'm an instagram account manager one organization different people with different platforms because you understand that they are all unique even these ads we are teaching you there's somebody that is an ad media buyer ad specialist that's all it does so Usually, in many places, they separate it. For Nigeria here, yeah, they always want Google in shape. In fact, if they can make, make you the get man, self, they'll make you get man too. Right? So, in some cases, they split it. In some cases, it's different. Community manager is just, you know, how to keep up, manage, keep up, give people information, manage the community.